Given a divided partisan Congress and a presidential election campaign well underway, President Obama is set to give his State of the Union address tonight. And that speech comes as he has yet to fulfill promises he made in last year's address. Tonight, Mr. Obama is expected to urge for higher taxes on the wealthy, propose ways to make college more affordable, offer new steps to tackle a debilitating housing crisis, and try and help American manufacturers expand hiring. And joining us right now from Washington with his perspective is U.S. Senator David Vitter. And Senator Vitter, thank you for joining us. What are you expecting to hear good from? Morning, good morning, Good morning. What are you expecting you. to hear from the president tonight? Well, I guess the conventional wisdom is that it's basically going to be a campaign speech with a little to do with what may go on this year. Uh, I hope that's wrong. I hope it's a serious speech with serious proposals that Congress can address. I was very happy to hear that one of his key themes is American energy and also how that can help American manufacturing. Now again, if, if he's serious about that, if it's a serious speech about energy among other things, there are simple ways to test that. We need to get production way up in the Gulf of Mexico. We need to open up access to a lot more of our American energy right here at home. We need to stop the EPA's unfounded and very dangerous attack on fracking, which is a process necessary to access enormous fines in this country we've made in the last couple of decades. And we have seen a, a very divided Washington on a number of key issues facing this country. Uh, there, there does seem to be uh, a, a, a call in this country for some kind of compromise, something to get the uh, gridlock stopped. Absolutely. And that will also be interesting in terms of this speech. The president's reelection strategy seems to be divide and conquer, seems to be to talk of, of uh, two Americas and, and, and really uh, rhetoric that in many ways is very, very divisive and villainizes large parts of, of America. And, and I hope he gets away from that. And I hope tonight is a serious speech which tries to unite us. And then what do you think about the, the president's um, address to the middle class of this country? Uh, um, he is painting himself as a champion of the, of the middle class, and he is in favor of raising taxes on the wealthy. Uh, there are those who believe the wealthy can afford to pay these higher taxes. Well, you know, if you're middle class, out of work, and looking for a job, I, I'm not sure it's going to be helpful to raise taxes on job creators or investors, and that's always been my concern. What I think is a much better alternative is broad-based tax reform, make the system a lot simpler, a lot fair, do away with all the special interest loopholes and deductions and special breaks, and use that to lower rates, including the business rate, the corporate rate, which is the second highest in the world, to create jobs. I think that would be far more unifying and far more productive in terms of job creation. And we're in, a, in a, an election season. We're having a debate after debate with the uh, GOP presidential hopefuls. Uh, obviously, the one thing they all have in common, they all want to unseat President Obama. But there's a, a lot of sniping going on in these debates. And uh, it seems the White House is enjoying the uh, infighting in the GOP. Well, they may be. I, I think debates are good. I think this is a very robust, healthy national debate, and I think these debates in general are good. I think the race will settle down eventually, and it will be a very, very clear choice and a very clear difference between the Republican nominee and President Obama. So I think there's plenty of time for that. Who do you think is the most viable candidate, or would you like to see somebody else enter the race? You know, probably like most Republicans, uh, I'd be interested in hearing other names and other possibilities. But I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. You know, everybody has their ideal candidate uh, in theory, but it has to be a real live breathing person, which is the, the tougher part. So I think we're probably past that point. Uh, I think the field is what it is. And like most Republican voters, I'm still trying to make up my mind looking at the candidates carefully. All right, Senator Vitter, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, you taking time to talk with us this morning. Thanks.